Pearl Curran was a married woman who lived a normal and quiet life with her husband, John Curran, the state of Missouri, USA. Her academic achievement was average, and she was not of broad imagination or broad ambition. The only thing that she loved in her life was music as she dreamed of her childhood by becoming a famous singer and taking piano lessons. But like most people, she never achieved her dreams. Mrs. Curran and her husband had no interest in literature or poetry, and they only had several general books at home. They were not wealthy, but their lives were comfortable. They had a maid in the house and often enjoyed eating in restaurants, going to the theaters, and at the opera. They were both sociable and liked to meet with friends and play cards to have fun with the neighbors. On the day, when her husband was at work, Mrs. Curran would spend most of her time with her friend and neighbor Mrs. Emily Huggins, and on a hot summer day in 1912, the two friends were chatting in the house of a neighbor who believed in the abilities of the Ouija board, which is a wooden board. Spiritual mediators claim that it is possible to contact the souls of the die through him, and Mrs. Huggins suggested, as a joke, to contact the soul of one of her relatives. And although she did not get from the random movement of her hand over the letters inscribed on the board except on several incomprehensible words, the experience she liked it so much that she has decided to buy an Ouija board for herself, and after a few days she took it to her friend Mrs. Curran's house to try it. Mrs. Curran did not believe in the abilities of Ouija and considered it a ridiculous tool to waste time, but she shared her friend in using the board out of courtesy. At first, the two women only got several meaningless words but suddenly, it seemed as if a strange force appeared in the index of the board that was taken he moves between the letters quickly to give the following message before many moons, I lived, and I am back. Patience Worth is my name. The two women were fearful, as they were certain that they had come into contact with a woman's ghost, and when they asked her who is, the answer came through the tablet, telling them that she lived beyond the seas between 1649 to 1694. In the following days, the two women continued to communicate with the ghost through a yoga board and they knew that she lived in England, but she was not identified in any part of it. But the description that she gave of the place where she grew up made many experts believe that she was probably born in the English county of Dorsetshire. As they were able to figure out how she died, Patience Worth told them that she traveled to America and went down to the beach near New York in 1694. It was at the time under the control of the Danes and its name was New Amsterdam. And it was nothing but a fortress surrounded by several wooden huts and that it killed by Native Americans. Although Mrs. Huggins attended most of the communication sessions with the ghost, the spiritual messages were coming to Mrs. Curran in particular, and these messages began to accelerate until it seemed to be transmitted directly to Mrs. Curran's mind. It became like telepathy and Mrs. Curran no longer needed a tablet. Ouija, and gradually ghost words took the form of novels, poems, and thoughts about a past life Patience Worth had so Mrs. Curran bought a printer to keep pace with the ghost's open appetite for speech. The story of Mrs. Curran with the ghost started spreading slowly among people, and many people visited her at home to see how she communicated with the ghost, and to their surprise, they saw her sitting behind the printer in an open and well-lit room, unlike the rest of the spiritual mediators who usually sit in dark rooms surrounding her. Dark Curtains Mrs. Curran described how she communicated with the ghost of Patience, saying that the words flowed to her suddenly, and she felt momentarily some pressure and heaviness in her head. Then the scenes began, and the images appeared before her clearly as if she was watching a film. She could see the fine details of each scene. If there were two people talking and walking if she can see the road they are walking on, the grass strewn on both sides, and the far background of the scene, if they are speaking a foreign language. 
Then she can hear their words, which comes with the voice of patience, to understand what they are saying and which part of their conversation should be included in the story. Sometimes she sees herself in the middle the scene moves between the characters as if it is in the middle of a museum until she has recognized many tools and clothes that she had not seen in her life before which became extinct hundreds of years ago, and heard words and sentences that no one used for several generations. It seems that Patience Worth was a first-class writer and intellectual. As her poems and novels were arousing the interest of critics, and newspapers began writing about her and printed excerpts from her poems. And in 1918 she was chosen as one of the best writers in New York and Mrs. Curran was invited to attend the Poetry Festival in the same year. The American woman sat on a par with the most famous American poets of the time, and one of her novels was printed The Sorry Tale One of the famous American poets, responding to the skeptics of Mrs. Curran's story with the ghost, commented, I am not ready to express my opinion on whether Mrs. Curran's poetry comes from Patience Worth or not. But without I doubt that what I produced is a fine literary work. Quote, In 1,922 million rupees Curran's husband died while she was in her sixth month of pregnancy, then her mother passed away in the same year and her financial condition worsened to the point of accepting financial assistance from some friends, and during the following years Mrs. Curran married twice. But both marriages were unsuccessful and then moved in 1930 to California to live with some friends, and despite all the circumstances and tribulation she went through, her connection with the ghost of Patience Worth did not break and continued until November 25, 1937, on that day the last contact between them occurred. And it was the last message it was strangest in the story, it was more like a farewell message, and when Mrs. Corn asked the ghost with amazement about the reason for her sudden departure, Pitchens told her that she, Mrs. Curran, would soon die, and that evening Mrs. Curran told one of her friends named Dot C. Smith about Patience's last letter said, Ah Dot C. Patience has just shown me the end of the road. Although Mrs. Curran was not suffering from any illness or health symptom, she suddenly contracted pneumonia and died on December 3, 1937 when she was four and fifty years old. For many years, the story of Pearl Curran was the subject of controversy and debate between the supporter and the skeptic. Each team had its own arguments and justifications. The skeptics believed that the talent for writing and writing was present and latent in Mrs. Curran and that she needed a way to direct it, so... she invented the ghost character of Patience Worth and for this purpose, to attract attention to her writings, since it is the strangeness of her story that mainly contributed to spreading her fame. One critic likened it to a long row of women in which a woman raises her dress to reveal her legs, surely all eyes will turn to her. Among the other arguments of the skeptics is that it has never been proven there was a woman named Patience Worth who once lived in Dorsetshire in England. Nor there was a woman who died in America in 1694 with this name of, in addition, that some passages and references in the novels of Patience Worth appeared as if describing events that occurred in the Victorian era, an era 200 years after her death. As for the team of supporters of Mrs. Curran's story, they argue that it has never been proven that Pearl Curran cut poetry or wrote stories before its connection with the ghost of Patience Worth and that it was of a modest cultural and academic level. So how did I manage to compose all these novels and poems in a high literary language containing words and sentences? It is an ancient language that goes back to the era of Shakespeare and it is a language that no one uses anymore. But one critic wrote about this language saying that it is divided into 90% Anglo-Saxon and 10% French and its words are old no longer used by anyone since the 17th century. 
So how about a woman who lives in the American state of Missouri in the 20th century and did not visit England in her life to write in this language? And how can she correctly describe areas and scenes from a country that she did not see in her life? Also, the fact that the name of Patience Worth was not found in the records of the 17th century does not mean that it did not exist in that era. As it is not fairing to compare the records of that primitive and incomplete time with the accuracy of records of souls in the modern era. One of the authors wrote a huge book in the 1920s including dozens of testimonies on Mrs. Curran's case, and he published an article in the newspapers at the time asking anyone who had any information that could reveal Mrs. Curran's lying or distorts her reputation and shames her past by calling him, but someone he did not call. In conclusion, we should mention that the story of the ghost of Patience Worth did not completely end with the death of Mrs. Pearl Curran, as for many years after her death, many plaintiffs and plaintiffs appeared who claimed that the ghost contacted them, one of these went so far that she issued a poetry collection that she claimed was one of the organization's worth. However, the critics are unanimous that the Divan poems are never quite as good as the poems written by Mrs. Pearl Curran.